During the SARS and MERS outbreaks, nearly 25% of patients had diarrhea, a much more significant feature of those zoonotic coronaviruses. But it's still not clear whether gastrointestinal symptoms play a major part in the latest outbreak. Given cases, diarrhea and abdominal pain have been rare. But why does a respiratory virus bother the gut at all? When any virus enters your body, it looks for human cells with its favorite doorways, proteins on the outside of the cells called receptors. If the virus finds a compatible receptor on a cell, it can invade. Some viruses are picky about which door they choose, but others are a little more promiscuous. They can very easily penetrate into all types of cells, says Anna Sukfong Lok. Assistant Dean for Clinical Research at the University of Michigan Medical School and former president of the American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you like those videos, please ring that bell. Researchers believe COVID-19 uses the same receptor as SARS, and this doorway can be found in your lungs and small intestines. Two studies, one in the New England Journal of Medicine and one preprint in the MedRefix involving 1099 cases, have also detected the virus in stool samples, which might indicate the virus could spread via feces, but this is far from conclusive. Whether that kind of fecal transmission is occurring for this Wuhan virus, aka COVID-19, we don't know at all. But it definitely looks like it's there in the stool and it looks like people do have GI symptoms associated with it. Coronaviruses can also cause problems in other systems of the body. Due to the hyperactive immune response we mentioned in the earlier video, you can watch it here by the way. A 2014 study showed that 92% of patients with MERS had at least one manifestation of the coronavirus outside of the lung. In fact, Signs of a full-body blitz have been witnessed with all three of the zoonotic coronaviruses. Elevated liver enzymes, lower white blood cell and platelet count, and low blood pressure. In rare cases, patients have suffered from acute kidney injury and cardiac arrest. But this isn't necessarily a sign that the virus itself is spreading throughout the body. It might be a cytokine storm. Cytokines are proteins used by the immune system as alarm beacons. They recruit immune cells to the site of the infection. The immune cells then kill off the infected tissue in a bid to save the rest of the body. Humans rely on our immune systems to keep their cool when facing a threat. But during a runaway coronavirus infection, when the immune system dumps cytokines into the lungs without any regulation, this culling becomes a free-for-all. Instead of shooting at a target with a gun, you're using a missile launcher. That's where the problem arises. Your body is not just targeting the infected cells, it is attacking healthy tissues too. The implications extend outside the lungs. Cytokine storms create inflammation that weakens blood vessels in the lungs and causes fluid to seep through to the air sacs. The storm spills into your circulatory system and creates systemic issues across multiple organs. From there, things can take a sharp turn for the worse. In some of the most severe COVID-19 cases, the cytokine response, combined with a diminished capacity to pump oxygen to the rest of the body, can result in multi-organ failure. Scientists don't know exactly why some patients experience complications outside of the lungs, but it might be linked to underlying conditions like heart disease or diabetes. Even if the virus doesn't get to the kidney and liver and spleen and other things, it can have clear downstream effects on all of those processes, and that's when things can get serious. This is part two of a three-part video. Stay tuned for the final part concerning the human liver. Thank you for watching.